Everybody is talking today about uh, that uh, there's no so much difference from different style of music, different medium of music. Music is one, you know, which is, I don't believe because music has functions. If music is the, has to be uh, created or performed for a certain uh, purpose, simple, like entertaining, let's say, something. And then uh, music is uh, instead one wants to shape, touch the spirit of people. Uh, uh, that's something else. Malera scherzo, that is kind of a uh, stream of consciousness uh, uh, movement. This is why I decided to comment on that with uh, reference to other music, because Malera, in a way, is uh, inhabited by many other musics. And um, so I decided to, to make a to take a, in a, a journey, a harmonic journey that is signaled by reference to well-known uh, or less well-known uh, uh, musical uh, um, element. The third movement, it's a kind of a homage to Gustav Mahler and uh, the skeleton, the bass, is the scherzo from the second symphony of Mahler, and from which many things are proliferating, are generated. So you hear uh, Debussy, Strauss, uh, uh, Beethoven, and so on, and also modern uh, music. Uh, it's very flexible. The first five measures are in one, one, two, three, one, two, and then the sixth in three, one, two, three, which is the fourth by Mahler, and then back to one. And then from there on, uh, there's this constant oscillation of tempo. One, three, one, three. But basically it's the same, but with a 
with a, a, a great elasticity. Let's, let's see. With me, Mahler is a is a kind of a short circuit between many different things. It's a is a meeting point. Uh, he had uh, an incredible uh, musical mind an incredible uh, awareness of history and then he had uh, he was looking to the future yeah the trombones here yeah, that's very important now the descending trombones eh? which is schoenberg by the way opus 16. Berio, starting the in Ruhig Fließende Bewegung, the third movement of the Sinfonia, with this violent scale from the trumpets and trombones, uh, written with the same notes but in a different rhythm, makes a statement like, you know, this is a precedent which really proved to be the beginning of the, 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 the Second Vienna School uh, twelve-tone system language. And I think this maniac, which appear and reappear uh, three times in Sinfonia, this, this uh, abrasive uh, chord of the brass, I basically think he wanted to prove that the interaction with Mahler's music plays a main role. As a matter of fact, is an overlapping of uh, two lives together, um, and one at the very end of the life of Mahler, and uh, the other one of a kind of relatively young uh, uh, Arnold Schoenberg, which at the end uh, provoke all what happened be uh, after the Mahler's death. I mean, this, uh, this revolution of the 12-tone system. The sixth measure is in three. So we go to the fourth symphony by Mahler. Okay. Beginning once more. Very hard. <laughs> With Mahler Ford, the first bar and half gives you the impression of something like, you know, like a and the other two flutes, and so you're already confused, and then comes a theme that you don't expect, that is so, can be Haydn, can be Mozart, uh, and then suddenly a sort of hesitation. So, three elements in very few bars, and uh, it's clear that uh, Mahler loved very much this classical world, and in the, in the same time, because his world was already so different, he likes to, to put the knife in to distort what was beautiful for him. All the music from the beginning of the century of Mahler and Schoenberg uh, tends to become a documentary, if you want, a documentary of a process, of a, uh, the, the general uh, very deep, tragic transformation that was going through the world in those periods. So uh, the symphony is also a documentary, if you want, documentary of, a, of, a, of that period, but exploding over uh, many, many other directions.
and I think uh, usually they they say that uh, modern uh, music, modern harmony, started from uh, the first chord of Tristan, but really deep down. Uh, Spiritually and emotionally, modern music started with Mahler. So Mahler is this uh, ship traveling, <laughs> the boat full of uh, beautiful things, uh, beautiful people and gifts and so on. So it's kind of a voyage to Citera. century in music as not only music in everywhere in any other expression was broken down was weakened this uh, uh, duality opposition in classical music too you have the the good and the bad if you want you have as you have uh, the consonance the dissonance you have the opposition you have something uh, uh, valuable that the always implies the opposite, something that's not valuable. That is the, I would say, the simplifying is the main uh, aspect of, uh, of classical uh, ideology. Uh, while in, from the beginning of this century, uh, for instance, the opposition are broken down. There's not poetry and prose, but the interesting aspect of uh, poetry and music too is to is to navigate, to move in between. That is the great uh, message of Schoenberg's uh, work, um, research expressiveness, to go further. But he was looking back at the same time. This is why the Schoenberg of those years is the most uh, impressive, the most generous for us. Uh, then uh, in the 20s, of course, he, he tried to formalize his vision of the 12-tone technique with neoclassical uh, connotation very different from Stravinsky neoclassicism, of course. Stravinsky neoclassicism was uh, ironic, too, 
unfortunately. But I must have said this before. Since I say it now... Transcription is always present in music, in creativity. I know. Just think of, a, to uh, mention again Stravinsky, one of his most beautiful uh, uh, work, Nos, really masterwork. He went through an incredible uh, uh, stages. He started with a full symphony orchestra, then reduced orchestra, then finally ended with four pianos and, and a choir and, and, and percussion. But, uh, but uh, it went through a, s a series of transcription of the same idea. Here is the first sketch of, of the Les Nos, which is uh, dated 1913. It isn't there. One doesn't know what it is. But you all know. Maybe a kind of competition on the stage. Just eight female dancers and words falling. You don't know where. Where now? Who now? But now I should say my old lesson, if I can remember it. I must not forget this. I have not forgotten it. But I must have said this before, since I say it now. Stravinsky, for instance, every time he makes reference to other music, be Bach, uh, Tchaikovsky, or whatever, it, it seems that he's, uh, he wants to measure his distance from those elements. In that aspect, uh, the, the last neoclassical work by Stravinsky, Agon, is very, very important. I was uh, touched by this idea that the neoclassical experience could be seen in a more positive way. The meaning being that you want to test, to measure the distance that is from you and other music. If you look carefully at the way mm, Luciano used uh, the 15 composers which form this unicum, which is the third movement of Sinfonia, 
represent not only his loves, but also his own formation as a composer. Mahler was the central figure in this composition, as it was uh, in Berio's life, one of the major points of reference. But then Berg, Debussy, Schoenberg, Hindemith even, which is the great enemy of the Second Vienna School, appear here often quota with quotations from the Kammer music number one. Berlioz, Il Re dell'Ecletismo, one of the greatest eclectical composer, but a genius, I mean, Berlioz. Ravel, Beethoven, Stravinsky, Richard Strauss with Rose and Cavalier, Brahms, and what about Bach? I mean, Bach is not so known how much uh, Berio has been studying Bach, as it is not so much known that in the last uh, 10 years of Mahler's life, Bach was the prime attention in his daily study time. And then Webern, of course, <coughs> and two out of these f 15 names, Boulez and Stockhausen. I must say, I prefer that. Oh, you know. Oh, you. Oh, I suppose the audience. So there is an audience. It's a public show. You buy your seat and you wait. Perhaps it's free. A free show. You take your seat and you wait for it to begin. Or perhaps it's compulsory. A compulsory show. Yeah, and the third part is the, the main text is uh, the unnameable by Beckett that is treated like uh, Mahler, like the scales of Mahler, but two continuous presence that uh, they come, they emerge, they disappear. This goes both for the music of Mahler and for Beckett text. And the Mahler music is proliferates all the time, generates other reference and uh, and um, uh, back at text also also goes to common uh, uh, phrases of uh, of daily life if you want uh, and then also the titles of every musical reference is uh, is uh, is given I don't know so at the moment there is a huge chord toward the end uh, which is taken from uh, Boulez Don and the text before says, I have a present for you. Bah! And <laughs> this big explosion. Every, everything, all the musical references are described in a very ironical, uh, uh, very light uh, way. One, two, one, two, one, two, two, two. He's, he's, he's doing a, a semiquaver. I think he basically beats what, he wrote, what he's written. So if he's got... Five sixteen. It'll be one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one. Oh, he's subdivided yeah. into some oh, uh, uh, Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Na mijn eindexamen in Den Haag, het was het in 364, ging ik achter Luciano Berio aan naar Berlijn. Daar had hij een heel chique, chique uh, invitatie. En mocht hij ook leerlingen meenemen. En hebben we dus een, een beetje een half jaar daar gewoond. Maar ik had toen al in een winkeltje in Den Haag ontdekt platen van een Frans vocaal groepje, La Double Six. Die jazz zongen. Dat waren de eerste platen van een groep die later dus de Swingelsingers ging heten. En die platen nam ik mee naar Berlijn en liet ik aan Luciano horen. Want ik zei, moet je nou luisteren, dit soort zingen, daar kunnen wij mee dealen. Dit zijn hartstikke leuke mensen. Nou fijn, hij hoorde dat. Dat is dus Symfonia geworden. Ik denk dat de ironie uh, uh, wel een uh, grote rol speelt, uh, sowieso in alle grote kunstwerken. Maar de, het, de derde deel van de Symfonia is verwijst in eerste instantie naar afscheid. Dat is absoluut zo. En dat is ook in de, in de, waarschijnlijk ook, komt dat door de manier waarop hij met die maler omgaat. Hoe het twee keer heel mooi wegloopt, hè, het stuk, verdwijnt het als het ware. Je, 
Dus de muziek loopt weg, maar het is ook wat je voelt bij een afscheid. Dat is aan het slot natuurlijk ook zo, het is over. Het is echt afgelopen. Dus dat is de, de melancholieke kant van het stuk. Dat is de sentimentskant van het stuk, denk ik. Met dat woord afscheid uh, omschrijf je het beste wat je, voor, uh, wat je voelt als je, het, als je ernaar luistert. Zo. One, ta ta, pa, 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 pa. When he quotes somebody else's music, the, the maximum he do uh, is to, to transpose it uh, one tune lower or higher, but it's basically very faithfully reproduced. That means really reproducing the music for the time and the way it was written in, in, the, in the time of the composition. And I think it's very, very down to earth in a way, very realistic. But the, the, this realism does not mean that the music is realistic. At the, at the contrary, I think it's a, it's a kind of nightmare or dream or, 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 or an apocalypse of sentimenti, of emotions, which go through those quotations. Recitation, that's the shame. Someone reciting, selecting passages out of the fables. Or someone improvising. That's the show. You can't leave. You're afraid to leave. You make the best of it. You try and be reasonable. You came too early. Here we see Latin. It's only beginning. It hasn't begun. He'll appear any moment. He'll begin any moment. Show to the sound of a murder, you try and be reasonable. Perhaps it's not a voice at all. Perhaps it's the air ascending, descending, flowing, heading, seeking exit, finding none. And the spectators, where are they? You didn't notice in the anguish of waiting. You never noticed you were waiting alone. That's the show for the fools in the palace. Waiting, waiting. Ik geloof dat de wals zelf een symbool is voor de ondergang van de tonale muziek, kan je zeggen. Een symbool is van de ondergang van het West-Europese centrisme ook, misschien wel in dezelfde tijd. En dat het dus niet voor niks is dat hij die maler neemt, wat ook over die tijd gaat. En dat die wal, de, de, of zeg maar de wals, het symbool wordt van, en wat er zich dan nog zo heeft aangediend, van de apotheose van de tonale muziek. En dat is vooral voor een componist een uitdaging, omdat er... Dat citeert hij ook in het stuk. Een andere componist die we allemaal zeer hoog achten en een beetje vergeten worden door de componisten, Ravel namelijk, zelf al zo'n soort stuk gemaakt heeft, namelijk La Vals. Wat ook gaat over de apotheose, noemt hij dat geloof ik, van de Wals. Very often there is a principle of alliteration, if you want, the same you use in language, when you have the same sound in two different uh, words. And uh, so it goes from, uh, I don't know, from Ravel to Strauss. Uh, to this, uh, there are all these uh, 
uh, shifting, uh, moving away from one uh, element to the other one, and then back to matter, of course, and then to myself at the same time. Okay. Uh, sorry. At uh, at Peter, uh, Peter uh, second trumpet with mute a little more. Eh? The mother is with mute and Ravel is without mute. Eh? At Peter, a little more uh, present. Do from uh, uh, one before O, please. One before O. Strauss. I'm interested in having. Uh, uh, things talking to to each other. I think that books they talk to each other. Musics from different ages, from different culture too. They talk to each other. Uh, voices they they have their, their own history, and uh, instruments too. So it's nice when uh, you can have the two histories to talk to each other, to comment to each other. This is why I use voice that they have an instrumental quality. This is why sometimes the orchestra has a quality that uh, reflects in a way the vocal uh, spectrum. shall overcome the incessant noise. For his own recess, if this noise would stop, there'd be nothing more to say. He tried to be fine. ever dare to accuse Bach to do almost the same with the Matthäus Passion, where non one chorale is composed by Bach. All the chorales of the Matthäus Passion are melodies or chorales pre-existing. And uh, he reorchestrated, he uh, had a different harmony on it, but he made clear use of something which was written from somebody else before his time. And uh, isn't that a perfect masterpiece? Who is shining through all this gigantic work? Johann Sebastian Bach, completely, without any doubt. So, moving into our century, the Sinfonia of Berio has the same un unique um, opportunity of proving the piece to be, by now, a classic, and a classic by Luciano Berio. You try and be reasonable. Perhaps you're blind. Or be deaf. The show is over. All oh, is over. Where then is the hand, the helping hand, or the nearly charitable, or the hired hand? It's a long time coming. Just take yours and draw you away. That is the show. Right. For nothing, waiting alone, blind. You don't know where. You don't know for what. For a hand to come and draw you away. Somewhere else, where perhaps it's worse. Where now? Keep going. When now? How? You, you know what this piece is about. Everything should be merging like an undistinguished color. A skin would change color just by doubling the skin, not because of wishing to change the color itself. Huh? That's the idea. The orchestration form the melody, in a way, of farben, of colors. You remember uh, Alma Mahler in the memory of, uh, of, his, uh, of her life? Schoenberg spoke to Mahler in these years, this is written in 1909, about the Klangfarbe melody. And uh, she stated that Mahler was totally disinterested, uh, completely indifferent. He said uh, Schoenberg was extremely challenging himself to Mahler, explaining this new concept of this piece. And Mahler was totally un 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 unreactive. 
he just simply cared less about it. But he, in his own way, he, he, could, he, could permit, he could permit himself to do that. Anyway, this is, because this is the piece which we have been always talking about so much in this 1909 time. Eh? Okay, let's go. Leggerissimo, leggerissimo. Opus 16 uh, for Schoenberg is uh, something which opened, even in Schoenberg's life, a new chapter. Um, I think it, it was um, at the time a kind of, uh, you know, cutting through a new Sprache. And even now, we performed the piece yesterday night, it sounds completely new, fresh, modern, even almost written this year, 1999. Weg op via contrabassi. Weg hier. Don't increase dynamics, please. Don't increase dynamics. Water is the generator of everything, even in our culture, if you want. We come from water. Then, of course, there is an opposition, and fire. It's true, but it seems that uh, when Picasso was in Paris uh, during the, the Nazi occupation, a German officer went to him and he had Guernica in his stu studio. And he said, uh, ask him, but you did that? No, you did it. <laughs> and uh, so this is a, is a very important, uh, uh, um, can I say, reaction, deep reaction to things. And music, of course, uh, is sensitive to that. Uh, I think a musician must be aware of this uh, um, 
or what is surrounding music without escaping into into you know science and so on to have roots in the in real life Dat in Sinfonia dit deel zit, dat was Luciano's antwoord op een voor een, vooral in Amerika al opkomende stroming van het citatenmuziek. Ook wel een beetje in Europa. Het Zimmerman schreef al heel vroeg een beroemd citatenstuk. Maar dat kwam omdat Luciano toen net zijn eerste grote klus in Amerika ging doen. En um, Sinfonia, de, althans de grote, de, het grote scherzo, is Luciano's antwoord op wat citaten? Dan zal ik dat eens even honderd keer beter doen dan jullie allemaal. Dat is een beetje de moraal voor mij van dat grote deel uit de Sinfonia. Het is wel interessant om dat zich nu juist te zien als een enorm grote afspiegeling van wat er zich in die tijd in de wereld voordeed. En waar, waar hij als een soort bijna eerder nog als een medium van profiteerde en dat teruggaf in, in deze vorm, wat een briljante vorm is, maar vooral zeer veelzijdig en polyinterpretabel. En dat, dat de kunstenaar in zo'n geval veel meer een spiegel wordt van een hem omringende of haar omringende werkelijkheid dan iets anders. Dan dat de, de kunstenaar verschuilt als het ware. Gelukkig maar, verdwijnt achter het kunstwerk. Disintegration, the name of Mayakovsky hangs in the clean air. Very annoyed in a way when, uh, when the after the performance of Sinfonia in New York, uh, I received many letters also from uh, well-known composers that I don't want to mention now from America, from even from Soviet Union, so and thanking me for opening the door to uh, to make reference to other music. But what they did finally was a mishmash, was a kind of a collage with no no musical uh, no deep musical reasons and uh, in fact many of those they continue picking up like uh, looking in the garbage of music history picking up things and putting them together with no no real sense the diversities uh, in matters uh, idiom in Marat's music are uh, again they are talking to each other. This level of music very very low, very simple, then uh, very high. Even the, the simple things are seen with a very uh, acute, very profound eye. <laughs> Thank you. 
find an answer for when we find ourselves face to face now, here. And they remind us that all this can't stop the wars, can't make the old younger or lower the price of bread! And tomorrow we'll read that Berio's alternati make tulips grow in my garden and alter the flow of the ocean currents. We must believe it's true. There must be something else, otherwise it would be quite hopeless. But it is quite hopeless. Unquestioned. But it can't go on. It, say it, not knowing what. It's getting late. Where now? When now? Uh, I have a present for you. Keep going, page after page, keep going, going on. Call that going, call that on. But wait. He is barely moving now, almost still. Should I make my introductions? We have Sarah Eden, first soprano, Darren Edwards, second soprano, Rachel Weston, first alto, Heather Ken, second alto. Gavin Cuthbertson, first tenor, Robert Keeley, second tenor, Mark Williams, first bass, and David Porter Thomas, second bass. But now it's done, it's over, we've had our chance. There was, even for a second, hope of resurrection, or almost. Mein junges Leben hat ein End. We must collect our thoughts. For the unexpected is always upon us, in our rooms, in the street, at the door, on a stage. I, I step very often in an unknown uh, territory, like the Sinfonia in, in, in the f uh, 30 years ago. Uh, and uh, and it's important to uh, uh, the feeling of communication must be challenged by by other dimension. Uh, otherwise, it becomes a uh, you know a banal uh, experience. I don't like music that confirms what is being already uh, stated, proved, but uh, uh, I like to explore new things, obviously, like uh, all musicians always did in their, in their life. Thank you. 